we finally left the end zone. Just look at this beautiful scenery. It's marvelous, even though it's a bit different from what we had pictured. We were able to secure a few basic resources and are storing them in our bus. I'm glad we prepared ourselves well for this kind of scenario, especially since our inventories in the end zone ran low. Don't forget that if you need additional information, you can look at our survival guide at any time. Well done. Everything you need to know should be right here. I think the time has come for us to at last build ourselves a new home here. Before we can construct buildings at all, we have to assign the profession builder to several settlers so that they can take care of construction contracts. In general, it's your responsibility to decide which tasks are important and how our settlers are supposed to be distributed to attend to them. All right, your builders will be ready as soon as construction contracts have been issued. It's time to start focusing on our key and most basic need, water. The first thing we ought to do is to establish a working water supply. So we'll move on to our first construction contract. Place and build a jetty by a lake in the vicinity of your town center. Very good. The jetty was completed as planned. Now we have a place where we can collect water. There are other possibilities to gather water too, but the jetty is the simplest and most cost-effective method. We can obtain and store water from different sources, like a jetty, rain collector, or well in the cistern. The cistern should always be in close proximity to a water source so that our water carriers don't have to walk too far.
We have now installed a working water supply, and water is now transported from the jetty to our cistern. Consider hiring more water carriers if you don't have enough settlers available. You can never have enough water in storage. Now we should focus on food production. It's important to ensure the supply right from the start. The gatherer's cabin, the hunting lodge, or a fishing hut can directly remedy the situation. I suggest starting with a fishing hut, since we're already located near a lake. taken care of our basic supply via food and water. Make sure that you have enough food and water on hand at all times, especially if you want to upgrade your settlement. A population that grows too fast can quickly unbalance your food and water supply, bringing major difficulties for you if you don't watch out. Crops are another excellent way of getting food because they constantly grow as long as the soil is moist enough. Each seed has different yields and growing times. This means that it could take some time until your field is ready to be harvested, in contrast to your fishing hut where production can be right away.
looks good. Remember that we need the widest variety of food sources to stay healthy. You should also plan ahead for drought periods that might come when it's not going to rain. Stock up on food and adapt your production to avoid bottlenecks. I'll show you a few more strategies later on. At the beginning, we don't have much scrap, wood, or other resources. We could build a production building, but to obtain resources as fast as possible, it's best that we start gathering right away. Assign a gather all resources task. All the settlers who haven't been assigned any profession by you are going to accept these kinds of tasks. In addition, settlers distribute resources within your settlement.
Since we now own plenty of resources, we can start to build a real production building. Then you don't have to always make efforts by hand that collecting is taking place. Production buildings are not only easier to manage, they are also distinctly more effective than simple tasks. Don't place production buildings too far away from your settlement. You'll be able to change their working area at any time later on. Right on. The best thing for us to do now is to build a forester's lodge to automate our supply of wood and make it more effective at the same time. Foresters are not only able to chop down trees, they reforest areas with trees as well. Good job. You might want to change this building's working area later on to tell your workers where they should get their wood from. Ah, and for your information, if you want, you can also tell your foresters lodge that they only ought to attend to reforesting an area in order to create a lush, green forest which generations to come can use. Very good. 
Now we ought to take care of collecting scrap. Scrap is one of the most valuable resources because the quantities present are limited and we can recover other resources from scrap. Unlike the task we just had, the scrap yard allows larger quantities of existing scrap to be dismantled than with ruins or wrecks. change the working area for the scrap yard too. We can recycle the scrap into four additional resources, cloth, metal, plastic, and electronics. We'll do that shortly, but for now, we ought to take care of your settlers' needs first. Our people want a place to sleep and live. Cabins fulfill their need for safety and privacy and increase the confidence of their inhabitants. In other words, building cabins increases their willingness to start families and <laughs> reproduce, if you know what I mean.
Besides cabins, you can also provide sturdy houses and shelters as housing. Sturdy houses withstand sandstorms better and have an increased storage capacity to boot. Children living in houses gradually fill up the house's stockpiles. Settlers do not reproduce in a shelter because they lack privacy. Let's return from our excursion into housing and refocus on scrap. With the help of a recycler or refinery, scrap can be sorted into four different resources. A recycler always takes scrap apart, one resource at a time, while a refinery automatically produces all four resources. To start off, you should build a recycler and produce cloth.
can instruct your recycler to produce a different resource at a time. It's important that you focus on the resources you really need, at least at the beginning. Cloth and metal look like good options if you want to equip us with protective clothing and tools. Happy settlers are industrious settlers. That's why we ought to look after our people and protect them against the surroundings and dangers, like radiation. So let's start by transforming our newly recovered cloth into protective clothing. A tailor will be able to help us with that. environmental radiation into four levels. No radiation, low level, medium level, and high level radiation. The radiation changes constantly and is influenced by weather and contaminated rain. Protective clothing helps to protect us against this kind of radiation, but it takes a while before it's produced. And production relies on a steady flow of incoming resources. Try to establish production chains at an early stage and start to stockpile goods so that some are always on hand. 
the tools we brought along from the end zone are slowly but surely running out. So now, let's focus on manufacturing new tools. The tools will help us to work effectively. We'll need metal for that, so we'll prepare for production by building another recycler, which we'll commission to recover metal from scrap. After that, we'll need a workshop to enable the manufacturing of brand new tools.
With our lovely new tools, we are now prepared to work effectively. Should you ever run out of metal, keep in mind that you can also instruct your workshop to manufacture tools from scrap instead of metal. Though they won't be quite as effective, it's still better than being forced to work with bare hands. Down in the end zone, we had sufficient time and resources to educate ourselves properly. But our children don't have this luxury. We ought to build a school and pass on what we've learned. As a result, they will be able to survive and work better and more effectively.